Okay, hope you also can see my screen now. Um, my name is Artemy Gaev, uh, based out of Kyiv, Ukraine. I'm responsible in, um, for technology solutions uh, in edge computing, virtualization. Oh, sorry, my video didn't start. It is. <laughs> uh, and I'm also driving development of the edge computing system among other things in, in EPUM. Uh, yeah, so some time ago, we started to think, well, basically six years ago, uh, we started to think of uh, pushing automotive industry towards edge computing and thinking what, what actually, what are the gaps and what's needed to implement the orchestration of microservices, both automotive and non-automotive, like maybe third-party services or new businesses or, or, or whatever is non-automotive can be treated as not an automotive right now in a vehicle. Implement OTA management end-to-end, -end, uh, enable modern software development for uh, for automotive industry, like kind of like cloud native approach or, or something similar. And uh, enable multi-tenancy, multi-access computing for, for edge devices. And we come up with the idea uh, together with Renesas, we come up with the idea of the platform that could enable that. We call it now EOSage. Uh, and well, six, almost six years after, it turns out that uh, it perfectly, <laughs> almost perfectly matches the uh, paradigm and architecture of uh, Sophie and uh, SDV in general. So. There are some key properties that we wanted to, to, to enable in the platform that include standard compliance. We wanted to use, we didn't want to just reuse every possible tool that exists out there, whether it's uh, cloud derived or not, but instead we wanted to reuse specifications and we went with OCI specifications. We went with uh, descriptions of um, like YAML and JSON descriptions that are already being used for quite some time. Uh, for vehicle APIs, we went with uh, DSS. Again, uh, I understand that and we understood that maybe it's not that widely used and it wasn't widely used like six years ago, but, but that's the standard and there is no good, strong developing com competing standard, no other good enough competing standard, at least we weren't, we weren't seeing one. And uh, with that, we, all, we also thought, okay, what if we try and bring um, approaches of, of cloud development to the vehicle, but actually taking into account nuances of the vehicle. So nuances where uh, security is not given, uh, connectivity is not given, and everything can go wrong. And there's always must be a way to roll back and resources are very limited. Like in, in the cloud, whenever I speak to cloud engineers, they 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 make laugh at me when I'm saying that RAM like memory is a big limitation. And no, actually it's not. Well, it is. <laughs> On edge, it is. And um, those were properties that we tried to <coughs> sorry <clears throat> to put and combine with uh, edge, well, into edge. Uh, combined with existing tools or approaches that were developed for the cloud, combined the, these requirements for the edge. Uh, that's how we came up with those. Um, some key properties we, well, not key, or key features that we, we, we developed were the division of control roles. We understood that in automotive, we, uh, there might be, there's, there's always OEM and OEM wants to control everything end to end because OEM is uh, liable for the for this for the product. Uh, but there might be different service providers, and there might be different tenants, or there might be different uh, units even within OEM who wants to deploy service. And there might be automotive services like uh, the ones described before for the safety for like vehicle recognition. That's one group of people might be developing it. There might be like stuff like UBI or or predictive maintenance, which can be completely different groups within the same OEM, or even might be an outside uh, company is developing those or fleet management and so on. So there should be some, some division between those who own the 
devices, and managed devices, and managed functional safety or safety critical parts, and those who actually develop the services which are which are running on on, on the on the on the devices. And then there are like fleet managers because there might be might be multiple clients owning multiple fleets, even for the private clients like in jail in different jails. Uh, fleets can can have different properties, and we went on with uh, other topics like well, if you if you think of running containerized services or safety services, eventually you end up uh, with solving the huge amount of dependencies on the firmware or firmwares across the vehicle that include firmware of the compute units, firmware of the side microcontroller peripherals, and so on. Uh, you have to solve the issues of isolation because just running a container and sometimes running a privileged container, which we do not allow, uh, require much tougher isolation than is originally done in, in the cloud world. And accessing peripherals also is a big issue. You cannot just allow a container to you to do what he, whatever he whatever it wants to with, with the peripherals. And uh, again, with the cloud, yeah. Fast boot is important, but not that important comparing to, to automotive. And we've seen that just applying traditional cloud tools in automotive world makes like boot times uh, ridiculously huge. And other topics in the, in, in the isolation and the, and the, and the security side. Uh, Multi-tenancy, so we didn't want to go with just like, okay, let's define a cluster and every time we want to update something on a vehicle, we need to rebuild the whole cluster. We, we didn't want that. We want to allow stacks of services to migrate between vehicles. So whenever like a driver or a user moves from one vehicle to another, the whole stack moves automatically or maybe like a bunch of stacks because there might be several users um, in, in, or like people in front, people in the back or whatever. I already talked uh, with uh, about the OCI compliance and standardization. We thought that it might be needed to have a common control channel for any kind of edge device um, that will you know, be, how to say, that will withstand the uh, disruptions, uh, disconnects, poor connectivity, and so on. Uh, for scale, we went on with the rollout campaigns like traditional, like Canary Blue Green, or, or rule sets like you cannot update device when whatever happens on the device, there should be priority on, there might be some devices or some services should roll out first and so on. And there must be, of course, pre-campaign validation. So you need to update stuff before you roll it out. Uh, and of course, all of these, all of these features must be covered with end-to-end security. So the system should integrate PKI, of course, and uh, use MTLS, no, no, not stuff like <laughs> generic passwords and stuff, use, use MTLS whenever possible. So we, we, we created them like, Two component system. So there's a cloud part, device part, standardized. Well, we hope it's going to be standardized protocol specification. The, the device part has a division between traditional edge services and safety services that are uh, implemented. I'll, I'll show in a bit different way. And the cloud part is responsible for like high level stuff, like fleet management, uh, campaigns, PKI, multi tenancy, and so on. I'll not go into that really in details. And what we're going to show on CES, maybe even a little bit before, um, we already have everything which is running in non-safety domain, which are like three parts on the left side and everything on the top side. But we are running now also safety domain. So basically from the cloud, we want to allow uh, dynamically deploy and orchestrate services or groups of services because there is multi-tenancy that are generic, like non-safety compliant and safety compliant. And safety compliant services we deploying using the same OCI specification, but they are actually running as unikernels, not as a containers. Uh, they're running uh, on top of uh, 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 VM. Um, uh, we are using a bunch of technologies. We use uh, Zen, Zephyr, and you, as you probably all, all know, Zephyr and Zen are going towards uh, uh, ACL compliance, or both uh, B and D. Uh, for different scenarios, we are here we are addressing ACL B compliance. Uh, 
everything on the embedded part we upstream. I'll talk about it later. So we already upstreamed uh, the fear support for Zen running Kingdom Zero. Uh, we are upstreaming now running unikernels, stuff like that. Uh, so the idea here is that there should be a system that enables deployment, dynamic deployment and configuration groups of services, not a single group like a Kubernetes cluster, but different groups of services uh, and dynamical updating any element without halting all of them in both safety and generic domain on a vehicle. Uh, this system actually is developed again, everything except the safety part, which we which we work on right now because it involves adding the Unicurl support. Uh, it is deployed, it is running, documentation is open, everything which is running on the device is also open source under permissive Apache license. That's production rate right now and it's deployed a couple of projects. And let me show it. I mean, there are links in this presentation, but still let me show it live. I still have five minutes, so I have some time to use that. All right. Hope you see my screen. Oh, yeah. So this is this is the um, how to say um, sneak peek <laughs> or uh, try out. Uh, site. So actually anyone can go and register through the sign up button. Uh, and uh, for the GitHub, let me, documentation is also public. Anyone can go look at it, research the architecture, how stuff is implemented on the cloud side with all the entities. Um, protocol, how it's implemented on the core side, with all the detailed documentation, with uh, description of the work, of the, of the flaws and stuff like that. Um, and the embedded site is also public on GitHub and being active development, being, being easy, it's an active development, with also documented and covered uh, so anyone can go and look. We we actually providing the releases. We support Renesas platform out of the box for uh, to play. We uh, to play with it. We use also VMs. We provide VM image, but anyone can build himself. And also, let me try and show how it works in real time. But I, I'm not going to show real devices. I don't have one by hand because I'm travel. So as I said, we have three entities, OEM, which controls all of the devices, all of the users and everything, everyone else. Service providers of groups of, of uh, or companies or, or uh, uh, I don't know, subunits within OEM or, or tier one that are providing services or service groups and fleet owner that controls users. I will go to OEM just for the sake of simplicity. Um, I can manage services, providers, I can have blacklist per fleet, uh, adding and developing, it's empty now because I just created this one. I can collect unit system logs, again, it's empty, but there's still something I can, I can, I can wrap. So all of this is just a nice, well, not, not very nice, <laughs> uh, somewhat nice uh, web UI that we built on top of the, uh, public API of the system, which is also defined and described in the documentation. And uh, I, again, as I said, this is built together by EPUM, EPUM and Renesas, and we are really happy to integrate protocols or, well, at least try and find ways to integrate protocols, uh, specification and everything, specifications and everything for Sophie, uh, because it's not the specification to run the stuff in a cluster in a vehicle, but more like a specifications and protocol, how to manage that from the cloud side. Yeah, that's that's all I had for now. Um, so in case if you have any, any questions, please not hesitate to contact me. I'm always happy to answer questions. The links are 
that, that I have in slides are all live and I think slides will be publicly available so anyone can, can go and try it out. If you have some questions, please mail me, find me in, 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 in any, any other way. Thank you all. Thank you, Artem. Um, very interesting to see, you know, the, the synergy between, you know, what, what you guys are doing and, you know, our, our Sophie architecture. So I think this is going to be a, a kind of really uh, fruitful relationship going forward.